Here are some examples of problems involving work and energy through multiple time intervals. In addition to your normal steps for solving work and energy problems, multi-event interval problems use additional strategic steps as an envelope encompassing and connecting multiple smaller problems. You may need to read the problem for multiple physical processes. You will have to break the problem into smaller parts based on the time intervals between things happening. You will solve the intervals from the one with the least unknowns and then use that answer as an input to the other intervals. When checking your solution at the end, you will need to return to the original greater picture rather than just a simple start to finish single interval. In this first example, a mass is sliding along a level surface is slowed by a rough patch before compressing a spring. When reading such problem, identify the physical principles involved. This example involves friction, which we can solve using the work energy principle. Another part of the problem involves changes in speed and compression, which can be solved using conservation of energy. Having identified the principles, we can go back and now highlight the relevant variables to those principles. As always, note what is being asked for. Break the problem into time intervals. Note that it only use time intervals with a definable start and finish where something has changed or there was an interaction in between those events. In this example, the first time interval involves the mass starting with an initial velocity and being slowed by the friction with the rough patch. We will set this up using the work energy principle. During the second time event, the mass, having cleared the rough patch, 
now slides and compresses a spring coming to a halt. With change in speed and compression, this can be solved using conservation of energy. Note that in this case, the second time interval has the least number of unknowns, so we can start our solution with that. Declare the conservation of energy. Simplify. If you know there are terms that are zero, express your equation in terms of its variables then solve for the unknown and plug in with units then you are ready to reach for your calculator We will now use the answer from the other time interval to plug back into the first time interval. Use the steps you otherwise would in solving for a work energy problem. Set up your free body diagram with the coordinate system solve for expressions for all the forces create expressions for the work done by each force and add those up to get the net work Use the work energy principle to solve for the unknown. Then plug in with units. As always, reread the problem to check that you have answered all the questions and that your solution is sensible. Note that not all answers are realistic, but at least you should check that they are within physical bounds. For example, in this problem, the coefficient of kinetic friction must be a positive dimensionless number. In the second example, a mass is launched by a spring on an incline and then travels along a level surface. We notice that height, speed, and compression are changing, which implies using conservation of energy. We will Read the problem in detail for the variables relevant to kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and spring potential energy. We will specially highlight what is being asked for.
In this example, there are two time intervals of note. In the first time interval, the mass starts from rest, then is launched by the decompressing spring up the incline. Note that height is already changing as well. During the second time interval, the mass is free of the spring, sliding up the incline, after which it is recorded to have a final velocity. Since there is no interruption between the two time intervals and both involve conservation of energy, it is possible to combine the two steps into a single one, thus saving time on writing your steps. In this walkthrough, I am going to demonstrate the solution using two time intervals and then demonstrate how they are combined anyway. Because both time intervals involve the same two unknowns, it is arbitrary which one we start with. For the first time interval, we set up the conservation of energy, simplify it, and solve for an unknown that we will use later. We will call this equation 1. We will do a similar solution with the other time interval. We will call this equation 2. Notice I have not yet substituted in variables and that's because it is possible to substitute entire terms of equations to algebraically equate them and eliminate the in-between time step we don't need. Notice that this final equation is equivalent of jumping from the very first time event to the very last one with conservation of energy being uninterrupted. From here on, the steps are straightforward, but remember what variable you are solving for. Also notice that in this case, the length of the incline substituted was from the very beginning of the first time event to the top of the incline and not just the part where the mass was free. Finish by rereading the problem and making sure you answered it in a sensible way.
You can always practice on such problems some more by substituting in your final answer from before and removing a different variable to serve as your unknown.